Private 5G provides a secure, high-speed, low-latency 5G network to help enterprises meet the growing demands of automation. And joining me to discuss P5G and a recent business announcement are Richard Band, Head of Sales, Athenet, a Hewlett Packard Enterprise Company, and Gianluca Varin, VP Athenet, a Hewlett Packard Enterprise Company. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. First of all, congratulations, Gianluca, for closing the acquisition. You must be excited about growing Athenet under HPE. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're really happy. We've been doing, uh, it has been really a long journey. We've been doing this for many years, over 19 years. Uh, my, my daughter just born when I founded the company, and now we're here. I think it was really a fantastic journey. We've been doing this for, for a lot of time. We've really founded this new uh, things that's called private network. We really contributed to, to, to take it into civilization, if you want. And now we want to scale it. And I mean, this HP, we understood this is really the perfect place to do it. So really thank you to, 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 to the people in HP because really believe in us is really important. How does your software leverage the potential of 5G to help businesses? And what are some of the use cases you're seeing? Yeah, so the, the software, a 5G-based software really is able to, to, to bring to the edge, uh, you know, the, the, the capability of the 5G. And so it's enabling private networks. The private networks really can be used for many cases. Uh, and we've been doing this uh, for years. We started for energy production. We've been doing this for uh, government use cases. Uh, first responder, we had the, the first responder uh, case when the earthquake in Italy uh, hit uh, the, the, the country in 2012. We've been uh, doing this port airports. We've been doing for border control. Uh, we're doing for train and the capability of monitoring uh, uh, car park. We did for university, be able to uh, uh, show it how to use it for educational purposes. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, really, is uh, our customers that are driving us uh, towards the use cases. And having a software so flexible really helps uh, to, 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 to find a very good solution for everyone. What are some of the key features or advantages of Athenet software that set it apart from other software in the industry? Well, first of all, we, we started the company thinking about the enterprise. And so our software is really uh, very efficient uh, is, and is capable of uh, running in a, in a very small footprint. Uh, this allows us to, uh, to use uh, a really uh, a small amount of power uh, and be able to be very uh, you know, uh, friendly uh, from a point of view of uh, uh, environment. At the same time, we have some features that are really coming from the operator's world that we've been also serving, which means that we are able to uh, support things like uh, uh, voice emergency calling. We're able to do lawful intercept. Uh, very efficient means also that we are able to do very low uh, latency, uh, support local and geo redundancy. We've been winning uh, many uh, cases uh, for wind farm, for example, where our competitors were not able to do geo redundancy. It's really important to have, uh, in the way that uh, uh, also Antonio talked about, uh, how everything works at the edge and how life uh, happens at the edge, it's very important to have something very efficient, a core network that uh, is interoperable with many radios. And, and really can take us there and, uh, and brings to life the edge. So Richard, what are some of the challenges that are being addressed by Athenet software that's not currently being addressed by Wi-Fi? Right, so we see a couple of reasons why people come to us for private, private cellular con connectivity. One is that uh, wide area coverage typically is something that cellular technology is more efficient than, than Wi-Fi, so it's actually more cost effective than deploying a Wi-Fi technology. Another one is when the usage of connectivity is evolving, and for instance, people introduce automated guided vehicles that are moving around at a higher speed. Typically, mobile networks have been designed to deal with that, while Wi-Fi is struggling a little bit when the speeds gets too high. Uh, but there are other reasons as well. There's reasons around, for instance, being able to separate Wi-Fi traffic that is made available to, to the customers that are coming to a venue like this one, and then having back of the house traffic on a completely separate network that ensures you have full control over what's happening there. So there are a multitude of reasons why people come to, to us for private cellular connectivity. What additional value does the combination of Athenet and HPE bring to enterprise? I think there's a few things here. First of all, on the back of your previous question, 
Wi-Fi is still a very good technology for many, many use cases. It's typically excellent for indoor coverage, high density, there's a large ecosystem. And so we expect most enterprises are interested in a combination of Wi-Fi and 5G. It's not an either or, it's an and. And having the HP Aruba capabilities with Affinet and bringing these two together is definitely an area where we can help the, the enterprise customers. Then the other thing that we definitely are, are bringing together with the acquisition of Alphanet is our ability to scale up what is already a very good business. And so they're in search for additional resources to just meet the demand. The market is definitely booming. And so the ability as HP to reach more customers and to provide more resources is another benefit of this acquisition. Can you give me examples of telcos that have used private cellular to advance their capabilities and create new B2B revenue streams? So, I mean, you know, 5G and even 4G before has been, in particular 5G, has been really, uh, you know, for many telco are really a very inexpensive uh, way to go to market. Uh, the frequency have been costing a lot of money and they kind of know that, the, you know, consumer will not bring a lot of revenue for that. We know that 5G is about enterprise and serving the enterprise in a different way. Uh, and private 5G is really what enables them to do this. We've been doing this for, for many years. And some example, for example, is, uh, you know, mining. The mining sector is uh, one sector that telco sometimes serves uh, to, to offer a better services, to be able to offer uh, even underground uh, capability that previously are not, cap uh, are not possible. For example, you know, ventilator, understand where people are, means that uh, they will be able to switch off and on the ventilators uh, uh, or, for example, be able to do remote blasting. You know, when they can uh, do the dynamite uh, explosion, then, of course, they, they, they need to understand if um, uh, the, the next step, how to extend the network. If you have uh, LTE or 5G, you, you really is automatically extended. There are many other cases, for example, airport, ports. We've been seeing this happening uh, also um, telco, being able to interact with a government entity to be able to serve them at best because government are always interested to have a wide area coverage that telco brings, but also to have dedicated coverage uh, no matter what happens. Um, so really, I mean, we think we are going to be the next source of revenue uh, the private network is going to be a net source of revenue for telco. So we and we have been signing many of them. Uh, a really very important one. I mean, we can talk about him, Vodafone, Orange. Uh, uh, we had uh, Indosat and Malaysia. We, we have really had a lot of uh, people there. Mm. What's uh, What's interesting is you see that the, the nature of the business is a little bit different than what we're used to from a telecom perspective. This is a business that is B two B side of the of the telco. And the way that they work is they, they go and find their customers and then they expect from us a, a business model whereby we, we are very quick to respond in terms of delivering the solution, installing the solution, getting it up and running. And they're also expecting a financial model from us that is much more aligned to what we do typically with HP GreenLake, which gives them a pay per use instead of an, an upfront capex and allows them to match the revenue and the cost of the solution. And this is also we're finding not just the opportunity, but also the way that we help them meet that opportunity is very important to them. How do you envision the future of private 5G solutions and what kind of advances and innovations do you expect in the future? Right, well, back to what we said before, first of all, it's very clear, we need to, to scale up this business. So private 5G is still in the early adopter stage. We need to take it to the, to the mass market. That means continue standardization, continue simplification, expanding the number of people that are made aware of this technology. So just the usual stuff of scaling up a business. Then the second step for sure is to do the integration with the Wi-Fi, both from an IT administrator perspective, so making it really easy to manage this as just another network in your connectivity mix, but also from the end user perspective, how to make it easy to seamlessly go between networks. And we're seeing some really interesting innovations happening in the industry discussing this just before with Gianluca, we're starting to see people getting into this and starting to think about, okay, how, how do I take it to the next step? I don't know, maybe you want to say something a bit more specifically on the private? Yeah, so I mean, there is 
many directions that this sort of uh, we think we can take it. First of all, as, as we just said, adoption. I mean, we create a certain technology. We want uh, all the world to adopt it because we think uh, this is really good uh, uh, and, uh, and they make it, as we said, uh, we democratize this technology. Most important, I think, is, is really the, uh, the, the, the capability that we have to bring alive the edge. Bring alive the edge with a core uh, means also that to, to, ab to be able to tap into the capability of uh, bringing all the applications there, many applications there. We know people want to also use in this connected mode. You cannot tolerate that a port stops working because you don't have connectivity to your cloud. So this is uh, another very important uh, point. Then what we do is also for the government side of the story, uh, we also do federation, network federation. You have multiple network, you need to be able to manage them simultaneously, but you also want them to connect spontaneously to be able to have uh, uh, the application on top of all the networks be able to talk with each other. It's not an easy task, but we've been really working on this for years and now I think uh, with the HPE acquisition we can have all the capability to scale the business and to bring it to the next level. Mm. Well, this is an exciting combination, so thank you very much. Gianluca, Richard, thank you very much for being with us today. It was thank a you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.